If you're thinking about building yourself a workstation on the Threadripper 7000 series platform, then this motherboard is probably one of those that you definitely want to check out because it's not just cheaper than some of the competition, but also offers some more features than the competition. So let's check this out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. See what they say over here? Perfect for design and AI. If you are thinking about actually doing or getting a Threadripper platform, I highly recommend checking out my Threadripper reviews where you can get a little bit more in depth of what you can do. So in this platform, you can get up to 96 cores, which is insane. This is TRX50 Aero D by Gigabyte. And we have the AMD socket with it, which is STR5. So let's see what's inside the box. Just cardboard bin with the motherboard, which I'll put on the side. We have a display port to display port cable. We have SATA cable, another two SATAs. We have a microphone. So this is to actually adjust some of the fans in the PC according to the noise inside the PC. So you can set a noise adjustment or noise as one of the parameters what adjusts the fan speed. Then we have two temperature sensors, installation guides, some more documents. And on this side we have, ooh, a new antenna design. Gotta check that one out. Some more satas and even more satas. So what we have, there was three, four, five, six, seven satas, maybe eight even. And then we have one of those front panel connectors. So you can put all your tiny little cables in here. That's new design. The old design looked like that. If you remember this PS5's designs of their Wi-Fi antennas, but this one is different. Have they got any? Oh, I see. There's a little magnet on the bottom here. So you could attach it to your PC. Very cool. So here is the motherboard. And first things, what I'm really liking about this is that even though this is like a pro platform, kind of a high-end desktop platform, well, it is. They can still pack a nice design to this. It looks absolutely beautiful. Now, Asus TRX50 Sage motherboard I don't like that design as much as this one here. This is absolutely amazing. And one of the interesting thing is that this is literally ATX size, if I'm not mistaken. It's not much bigger than an ATX size, which is really, really nice. You don't need a big motherboard to pack lots of features in. They've packed it all on a just ATX normal size, which means that you can use this in a lot more cases than an EATX motherboard, for example. Firstly, we have the socket, and this does support Ryzen 7000 Threadrippers, and hopefully in the future, the next generation as well. Ryzen 8 or 9000 series Threadrippers. So we've got one here. This is the Threadripper 7970X, but this also supports a Threadripper Pro series. So you can put a 96 core CPU in here from AMD, but that would actually limit some of the capabilities because of this platform. The WRX50 platform will, or WRX90 platform, sorry, will give you more RAM channels and more features, but this doesn't give them as much. So let's take a look, what does this motherboard offer? Firstly, we have four DIMM slots, and these are our DIMM slots. Bear in mind, they're no, not normal DDR5. You can't just get that in there. You have to have RDIMM. They work on a different voltage and they work differently. So they're really like a high-end desktop platform or server platform RAM that you can put in there. There's four slots and these are four channels as well. So you've got individual channel, channel per slot. Then, Looking at the top here, we have two CPU power adders or two 8-pin EPS connectors on the top there. There's nothing in there. Usually they're over there, but right now there's in the top in the middle. And then there's nothing else on the top there, really. This is just emptiness in there. And then if we move on the side here, we can see some RGB headers. We've got 12 volt and 5 volt RGB header there. There are two more 5 volt RGB headers on the bottom there. So altogether four in total. We've got a doctor debug here for your postcodes and error codes in there for good troubleshooting. Power switch, ATX, 24 pin ATX power supply goes in here. And it's nice to see that they're nicely metal coated on the side, very strong kind of connector. At the same time, 
not many people need reinforcement of the power connectors. Then we have fan headers. We've got three in here. We've got pump, CPU fan and CPU fan optional in here. And then on the bottom, we have a big row of system fans here. As you can see, we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fan headers all together. Some of them are system fans, some of them pump fans added differently. The only difference is that the CPU fan and CPU fan optional, I believe they share the fan curves, but the rest of them are all separately adjustable in BIOS. They're all 24 watt capable, so 2 amperes, 12 volts. Moving on, we have some SATA headers and there are 8 all together in here as you can see. Then in there, we have a front panel USB Type-C header, which is 20 gigabits in speed because it's USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2. Then this little guy here is the noise sensor. Remember we had the microphone in the box, so you can put it in there and then you can get extra data of the noise inside the PC and adjust the fan curves of or cooling according to that sensor that moving on here we have a front panel USB type 8 header and this is USB 3.2 gen 1 port and it offers two ports and both of them five gigabits in speed we have a BIOS battery front panel headers and then on the top here we have a clear CMOS header so if you actually short these two kind of uh, sticks in there it's going to clear a CMOS or you can press this button there the top button both of them clear CMOS switch. Then the bottom one here is a reset switch actually and a reset, reset header in there as well which is random. You've got X reset header. So you've got a dedicated one on the front panel here. There, That's the bottom row third and fourth pins there and then you've got one on the side there literally very very close i'm not sure why you'd need that but sometimes let's say you know you don't know what's going on and if it's that header or front panel is not working you can just either short these or you hit that button both of them reset your pc moving on a little bit on these system fans we have two more headers there and these are temperature headers you had those sensors in the box there you can put them in there and then measure certain parts of the pc case or somewhere um, the temperature then you've got usb 2.0 headers moving on we've got a tpm header for your trusted platform module and this is esbidb header and can i be honest i have no idea what this is for i really don't know what this is for if you know let me know in the comment section below and finally we've got your front panel audio covered so that's all the headers of the motherboard actually very straightforward layout and everything you would really need compare this to the asus trx50 sage there was a lot more kind of a server and overclocking features on the Asus one. And that makes the Asus one actually 50% more expensive than this one as well. And I'd argue for most people, this is going to be a better pick. So the PCA expansion slots, and you've got three. Top here has got a nice little extra kind of lever here to make sure that you can really undo that when you've got GPU installed. The second and the third one, not so much. Now, the first one is PCA Gen 5 X16 slot. And so is the second one. Both of these X16 Gen 5 slots. And then the bottom one here is PCA Gen 4 X16 as well. Whatever you plug in anywhere, you're not going to get any switching. You're not going to lose any features. Plug in or don't plug in. You're always going to get the full fat speed. Now, another thing that I like very, very much and even though asus kind of pioneered the initial feature gigabyte has taken this to like completion that feature which is a toolless design take a look at this do you remember when we had used to have a screwdriver to screw in screws on your m.2 slots here we just open that one and then the cover voila comes off we've got dual sided heat sinks on the bottom and on the top which is very very nice and if we take out the second panel as well very similarly, toolless design, remove that. You've got pads on the top, but not on the bottom. Now you've got four M.2 slots all together. One, two, three, four. And this is PCA Gen 5 X4 slot, and so is this one and this one. You've got three PCA Gen 5 X4 slots, which is absolutely amazing. And then you've got one more in here, and that is PCA Gen 4 X4 slot. But this one also supports SATA and other options there even though these pca gen 5 ones offer also like 110 millimeters long m.2 ssds if you've got optane or something like that you can put that on the gen 5 slots even though the gen 4 does support sata and other bits i like this toolless design so much so 
are you just going to pop your SSD in again toolless design and this is on a kind of spring so you just pull it in there and automatically it will close this in there so if you take something the likes of Kingston Fury here for an example plug it in there pop it down boom oh this is so easy so easy to do and compared to the Asus TRX50 Sage motherboard Asus has only two M.2 slots this one has four so as a creative I'm leaning more towards this one because it's cheaper and actually offers features that are important to me. Now, let's put these heat sinks back and look how simple that is. Pop it in there, boom. They say create a series, creativity starts here and I can't fault that slogan. It really starts here, it's very good. Oh, you can even, look, you can even close it by just pushing it down and it just automatically closes. So you don't even have to open that, you just push down boom oh this is so so good i am enjoying that a lot if you're looking on the back side of the motherboard there is really nothing in there this is an interesting thing here it says ultra doable armor so this is actually an extra reinforcement for this top pcie expansion slot so if you plug anything in there this has got extra rigidity so the pca slot is not going to be bent down over time even if you've got a massive rtx 1490 with a brick on top this feature here should actually give it extra strength let's take a look at the motherboard i o we've got a q flash plus button over there so you can update the bios by just putting something in one of those pods here i'm not sure which one but you plug in your bios you know on the usb stick and you can do that so we've got bios flashback which is very very nice then we've got some antennas here for our beautiful wi-fi antenna and this is wi-fi 7 and bluetooth 5.3 which is absolutely amazing, especially if you're a creator. Let's say you don't have wired connection, even though you should, because you've got fast wired connection. You can get very fast wireless connectivity if your router allows to do that. Router? Router. Router? Router. Am I upsetting some people right now? Then some USB Type-A ports. The red ports here are 10 gigabits in speed Type-A, and then the blue ones here are 5 gigabits in speed. Then we've got a display port in. So this is not a video output. There's no integrated graphics on the CPU. This is for your video output through the USB-C. So do you remember we had the display port cable that came inside the motherboard box here? So what you do with this one is you're going to have a graphics card somewhere over here. You're going to take the display port out from the GPU and put it inside here, this port. And then you get video output over this USB-C port here, the top slot. As you can see, it's marked slightly different than the bottom one. Even though both of them being USB 4, the top one will give you video output. So if you're a creator and you use a tablet that needs video output when drawing or doing your, you know, animation things or sculpting, then this is the port for you. Both of these USB 4s can go up to 40 gigabits per second speed and I'm liking USB more than Thunderbolt because USB 4 has better support for non-Thunderbolt USB-C devices. So if you've got any and external enclosures for your M.2s, USB 4 or 10 gigabits or 20 gigabits in speed ones, then USB 4 supports it a lot better. Now, I don't think the 20 gigabit, they do support the USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, but the 10 gigabit and 5 gigabit ports or USB-C, they will support that. So let me know, do you prefer USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, or if you know the difference? Then we've got some ethernet ports or LAN ports. We've got two, one of them is 2.5 gigabits and one is 10 gigabits. That's very nice to see. And then we have line out and then a microphone. So one in, one out for your audio. No optical output though, but that is it. So another thing that I can see that's different on this motherboard is the actual heat sinks for the power delivery. Now, here we have a big heat pipe that goes all the way around in here and then comes out from this side. You can see the heat pipe ends in there and then on there as you can see and that goes all the way around and then we've got some heat sinks in there now if you have good airflow inside the pc case i don't think this is going to be a problem but the asus board actually had an active fans on the heat sinks which probably is going to give a better cooling for the asus one but i prefer this one because this is going to be quieter and i have the control how i'm adjusting the fans here or if i'm putting a fan on the side that blows air somehow here i can figure it out which i prefer a little bit better generally 
I am very happy about this motherboard and I think so far this is the best Kratom motherboard for Threadripper platform just because what it offers, the features, everything. There's no extra overclocking features that a Kratos shouldn't have anyway, which the Asus board has and I'd argue, look, Kratos really don't do that. So if you want something solid, I think this is the board for you. Also, this has USB-C video output. So there's a lot of features in here that the Asus board doesn't have, but is also cheaper and nicer design as well. Let me know what you think. And if you want to pick this one up, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. But if you think this platform here is very, very expensive and you're never going to build or have money or budget to actually build something on this platform because it's very expensive, I've got much more affordable build guides in the video description below. So go check them out. They're all down there. Whatever your budget is, they're there. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.